This is more of my world. I've got a, a couple of slides that hopefully explain it to you. The most straightforward thing to think about is think magnet because the rhizosphere in the soil is predominantly negatively charged but all the cations that we want to feed our plants are positively charged. So if you think of that area around the roots is predominantly negatively charged. That's your clay, that's your silt, that's your organic matter. Sand doesn't have a charge at all. And then you've got your positively charged nutrients in the soil that are bound onto that negative area. Depending on the positive charge it's got, it depends how much it's bound in the soil. And this is a really, really important point to bear in mind, ladies and gents. You can measure that and go, oh, brilliant, we've got loads of it. But unless you help that get out of the soil by having a healthy crop, you're a bit stuck. The major anion, as in negatively charged nutrient that we need, is phosphate. As you can see, it's got quite a high negative charge, which means it sticks like to a blanket in the soil because it bounds on in preference to all the other cations that are in the soil and doesn't come out very easily. So if you've got that mental picture of we've got everything in the soil but it's stuck there, without the roots growing, and without the roots growing effectively and providing the exudate, slime trail on the outside, feed the microbes, that situation will just stay there and you're not going to make money. So if we take that as our first situation, that's the slide we've got now, but the clever bit of nature, for want of a better expression, is it's a very symbiotic process. That slime trail that's got the amino acids and sugars in feeds the microbes. In exchange, the microbes produce hundreds of thousands of millions of hydrogen ions. Yes, they're positively charged, but they're slightly acidic. So once they've broken, uh, sorry, produced the hydrogen ions, that then breaks the bond for all the nutrients that are in the soil to then be liberated in the rhizosphere, in the root zone, in the water, and be absorbed by the plant. If that root is not growing effectively, that won't happen. And that's the bit that you guys need to achieve to make money. Because once you start doing that and interacting with the microbes in the soil, as I said earlier on, you know, the reduction in input costs are dropping year on year on year. Yields are stabilizing, and in most cases increasing. Not dramatically, but increasing enough to be making a difference. Tractability, working, movement power, everything that we're doing to establish the crop is reducing. I'm getting quite a few of my younger farmers complaining because they know how to take their wives on holiday more often, or in the other case, wives take their husbands on holiday, but more time, more money, because the soil and the crop are interacting properly. That's really important to find out about your cation exchange capacity and make it work for you.